welcome to the lectures on evolution of air interface towards 5G. So, we are at present at the middle of a very important uh, analysis or waveform uh, discussion which is uh, OFTM which we had started uh, in the previous lecture and uh, this is uh, very very important. I would always say that uh, it is uh, very critical to understand this because when we go into 5G we will not discuss the details of it, we will be only using the parameterization. So, it is essential that we understand as much details as possible for this particular structure. So, uh, what we were discussing in the previous uh, lecture was about the uh, resilience towards multipath and uh, some of the parameters that are of interest. So, uh, we were talking about the three important parameters as uh, we have uh, pointed out here. So, we have actually identified this uh, number 1 over here and uh, that is the time interval for the OFDM symbol should be less than the coherence time. We will discuss the coherence time and uh, the 1 upon t or in other words uh, t should be greater than 1 upon b c which is the other way of looking at it. So, it is basically the subcarrier bandwidth 1 upon t is uh, effectively the delta f must be less than the coherence bandwidth. So, this is the point number 2 that is what we were discussing yesterday. So, the subcarrier spacing should be less than uh, coherence bandwidth or the subcarrier bandwidth is less than the coherence bandwidth means that each subcarrier experiences a flat fading that is what we were discussing here that this width should be less than the coherence bandwidth. Okay. We will understand coherence bandwidth later on, but as of now we have briefly given an explanation that there is a fluctuation in time sorry there is a uh, impulse response which causes a fluctuation in the frequency resulting in frequency selective fading. And the other thing is that the guard interval which we were discussing uh, in the previous lecture that is the interval that is necessary for uh, separation between two consecutive OFDM symbols which is the guard interval that is what is written over here. So, this guard interval should be greater than the tau max which is the maximum excess delay of the channel. The maximum excess delay of the channel has been pointed out over here which is the maximum length of the extension of the channel impulse response. Right? So, these three things we must remember and uh, we said why these are critical because this coherence time comes from Doppler. Uh, we have talked about Doppler over here. So, signal strength fluctuating with time. So, we would like that uh, over the duration of our consideration although it appears very very small in this particular diagram, but uh, this is in order of seconds and when we are res I mean seeing it with higher resolution. So, we would see that the signal uh, that the channel is fluctuating something like this in this scale this is the time axis and this may be in milliseconds or microseconds and we will see that uh, with the parameters of interest that this time in duration is in the order of microseconds. So, when that is in the order of microseconds, uh, when these fluctuations appear so much uh, changing in order of seconds, in order of microseconds they almost remain constant. So, uh, but however, um, when Doppler becomes very high and uh, effective Doppler, uh, Doppler is basically due to mobility. So, you have uh, vehicular mobility, we will look at the exact expression and the carrier frequency both influence the Doppler. Of course, the angle at which the signal is arriving at the receiver is also important. So, uh, as the carrier frequency increases, right, uh, we have discussed in the fifth generation millimeter wave is one of the bands and also higher uh, frequencies towards uh, 6 gigahertz are also being contemplated. So, there uh, even under the same mobility condition, a higher frequency causes increase in Doppler. We have also seen that 5G requires to support 500 kmph kilometers per hour. So, that means the mobility support also increases hence uh, Doppler is a critical factor. So, under very very high mobility conditions or very high Doppler conditions these uh, constraints become important. Okay. Um, so, this in this particular uh, picture we have carried forward whatever we have been discussing earlier. So, here we have the frequency domain picture. So, we have the frequency axis. So, this is the f axis okay, in hertz or megahertz or whatever is the unit one wants to use and this bluish line that we have over here indicates the uh, fluctuation of the channel with respect to frequency. So, this flux this changes and this is because 
if uh, this is your delay axis or the time axis and this is your signal gain axis. So, the channel impulse response if it appears in this manner, then if you do a Fourier transform of this of h of tau and you take the magnitude of it mod squared of it, you would get a fluctuation in the frequency domain which looks like this. We have discussed this earlier and uh, each of these units which is the subcarrier bandwidth we can say. Uh, they should be small enough, so that each encounters nearly flat fading condition. So, this pictorially uh, depicts what is going on and uh, it is kind of flat fading situation. So, effectively uh, when we look at the time domain as given over here, uh, the signal as if sees a single equivalent path, because all of these paths get added up together by virtue of match filtering, because we have said that the receiver processing will do an integration from 0 to t. So, t is this duration. So, if this is the duration of t, then all these values get accumulated, right. They of course, get accumulated by multiplying with the pulse shape, but here again uh, we have said that in the interval of t that is of our consideration uh, for OFDM, this remains a rectangular pulse, hence it is a constant value. So, effectively all these paths get added up together. So, they add up to form an equivalent impulse or equivalent uh, sample value of a particular phase. So, so if it is a single equivalent delay that would result in a flat fading across a subcarrier. So, each subcarrier sees a single equivalent path and hence it resolves it or it sees it into a flat fading channel for that particular path. So, now if we take one subcarrier at a time, uh, in that case uh, at the receiver side, uh, we are uh, we will see that that x of k uh, gets multiplied by h of k. This expression also we will see in, in due time that uh, effectively this is the flat fading equivalent of the channel. So, your received signal structure would look like this in the frequency domain and hence uh, since this is a scalar. Uh, equalization is very simple. One of the most elementary equalization would be to if I know h, let us say h cap, uh, I could take an inverse of it and multiply with y cap, I will be left with x cap the desired signal plus h cap inverse w k. That means, there is some processed noise, this can be considered as processed noise and this is the desired signal. So, as if the signal is corrupted only by noise by additive noise and the noise is of a certain uh, variance. Now, h uh, again we will see later on that h cap is basically the Fourier transform of h tau what we are talking over here and uh, this, 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 this particular channel impulse response is uh, under most of the circumstances that we will consider uh, would be 0 mean giving rise I mean in non line of sight conditions, rally fading conditions. So, if this is 0 mean, then the mean of the process noise is also 0 uh, as well as uh, what happens is only, only the, uh, the sigma value of noise gets changed. So, this results in only a change in the noise variance, right. So, uh, this way it helps one uh, have less complex receiver. In otherwise, if we were processed in time domain, what we are seeing is that there is ISI and one needs to take care of it by implementing a ISI cancelling receiver, which increases the complexity, because uh, this has to happen for every symbol and uh, even then you would still have some kind of residual interference, uh, because of which uh, the error will reach a error floor and it will simply not decrease to the smallest possible value. Okay. Uh, moving further, uh, this particular picture is uh, essentially talking about what we have been explaining. It is rather more pictorial and uh, this simply says that if there is a transmitter, the signal propagates through multiple paths. If one could be direct line of sight, there could be uh, another reflected path from a moving vehicle and it could be reflected from different kind of surfaces and as a result of which an impulse would appear as echoes or these are the delayed version of the impulse that one receives and in a typical single carrier system, there would be a uh, inter symbol interference. So, if we again uh, graphically look at uh, the multi carrier system, each of the subcarrier which occupies a spectrum which is like a sink 
and there is guard interval. So, this matches with whatever description we have given before and uh, this is the useful symbol duration which has become long. Okay. So, there is a cyclic prefix uh, which gets added between the guard interval and since you have a long symbol duration the bandwidth is narrow, it is a narrow band and earlier you had a wider band and symbol durations were small. right? Symbol durations were small means this the entire system bandwidth would have been large and that would have experienced select frequency selective fading across the entire band of operation. So, we will clear up these single carrier systems. Right. So, yeah. So, now since you are occupying a smaller band, the question arises that what do we do with the other bands? Again, the answer is very simple that you send them in parallel. So, once you send them in parallel, this also matches exactly with the definition of the transmitter architecture. So, each one of them are subcarriers carrying symbol x k. So, this is a subcarrier index k 1, this is another subcarrier index k 2 and they will all of them would be in parallel and this particular picture gives a complete time frequency uh, realization or one can extend one's imagination that this is the time axis and this is the frequency axis. So, frequency axis can be in this direction. Okay. So, overall uh, the time frequency signal would look like this and we had said earlier that uh, in, in one of the carriers this would be the uh, subcarrier frequency, the next carrier could be having the subcarrier frequency which goes there, the next one would be having cycles okay, and the next one would be even having a faster frequency, but all integer multiples of the previous one. And what we have uh, given over here is that uh, one needs to estimate the channel coefficients. So, because this is these are fluctuating um, in, in reality uh, these channel fluctuations are uh, not as fast as is typically represented in this diagram and they usually remain constant over a few number of subcarriers. Okay. So, that is the coherence bandwidth over which it remains constant and hence pilot carriers need to be introduced uh, pilot subcarriers. By pilot we mean the sequence which is known at the transmitter and at the receiver. So, that means it is known both at the transmitter and receiver which is used for channel estimation. Okay. So, some of the carriers are used for uh, pilot channel estimation, rest of them are used for data communication. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, just the similar picture given in a more uh, illustrative manner that a uh, single carrier system with ISI on this side and frequency selective fading as you can clearly see because the bandwidth would be pretty large in this case. Whereas, uh, when we go for OFDM this is the translation that happens from a single carrier system to a multi carrier system. Uh, this is the representation of the channel impulse response and from channel impulse response we have the channel transfer function which is this fluctuation. Okay. And effectively each of the subcarrier receives flat fading. So, this is a cumulative picture and uh, one can uh, visualize what is going on uh, which results in flat fading per subcarrier, uh, no ISI uh, due to multiple reasons mainly because of introducing a guard interval and because of flat fading there is single tap equalizer, there is bandwidth saving because of overlappingness of the uh, spectrum and that not only gives uh, bandwidth saving it is primarily because the spectral efficiency has been increased. Okay. And as shown in the previous one we here depict all I mean the distribution of pilots all over. So, that uh, in different sections of the coherence bandwidth one can introduce a pilot. So, roughly speaking for every coherence bandwidth there needs to be one pilot carrier. So, one can say one pilot subcarrier. So, this is uh, important in order to estimate the channel. <coughs> Okay. So, uh, we now uh, discuss the cyclic prefix part. So, this particular uh, waveform structure is uh, you are well used to by now uh, given all the descriptions and uh, we have said why the guard interval is necessary, but then uh, instead of simply having a null in the guard interval uh, what is done is uh, a cyclic extension of the signal is done. 
right. So, we will discuss the cyclic uh, prefix part over here. So, if this is the entire symbol duration as it is written over here useful part of the OFDM symbol. Okay. So, this is the useful part of OFDM symbol. So, all your figures you must have realized that it covers this particular part. Okay. So, that is the part it covers. All right. And now, what is done is uh, this particular portion as, as given over here, I would rather write it as guard interval. Okay. So, this is the guard interval part. Okay. So, now, instead of leaving it blank, the last part is carried forward to the first part. So, as you can see the picture, uh, this portion this entire portion we have indicated it by this kind of a line and we are indicating it by this kind of a line. So, that uh, this continuity or the ease of understanding is maintained over here. So, it is copied in this part. So, if I say this as 1, 2, 3, 4, this will be labeled as 1, 2, 3, 4 in that manner. Okay. So, if we see how it is copied, uh, this particular portion goes over here and this particular portion goes over here. So, this part of the waveform which is copied the red colored one which I am marking with a blackish color is basically over here okay. as you can clearly see that and the other waveform which is over here is being copied over here. Okay. So, that is how the cyclic prefix extension is done. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, with this uh, cyclic prefix there is lot of advantage we are going to discuss that. So, let us look at what is happening in the guard interval part. Uh, this uh, channel impulse response as we clearly see over here the channel impulse response which is here it is subsumed within the guard interval that is one primary reason and we have said that T guard interval should be greater than tau max. Tau max is the maximum impulse length of the channel. So, this prevents inter symbol interference. Inter symbol means inter OFDM symbol interference. Okay. So, this one thing and uh, because of this cyclic prefix that is what we are getting yeah, and the, in the receiver when, when the signal goes through the channel what we know is that if x t is the signal it actually gets convolved with h t comma tau, tau is the delay and t is the time axis. Now, uh, when we process it at the receiver, we use a DFT operation. Okay. So, now, uh, the DF, when, when we look at the time domain convolution operation, if I take the Fourier transform, it would appear x of f, the, the dual of it would be x of f multiplied by h of f. Okay. Whereas, if I do a cyclic extension, this convolution turns to be a circular convolution. Okay. So, when it turns to a circular convolution, if I do a DFT, then it would result in x of k which is a DFT of x t and h of k which is a DFT of h t. Correct. So, at the receiver since we will be implementing an, an uh, FFT operation because of the transmitter we have implemented an IFFT operation. So, at the receiver we will implement an FFT operation, FFT is a realization of DFT and in the time domain it corresponds to the circular convolution. So, the circular convolution would be effective if we have a repetition of the signal or as if the signal is repeated in, in time, I mean if it is repeated in time and we do the convolution, linear convolution it appears as circular convolution. So, what we see is that this enables us to use the DFT operation at the receiver which can be implemented by FFT. Right. So, at the transmitter we have the IFFT operation, at the receiver we have the FFT operation. So, again we recall that we have been discussing this DFT which gets finally translated to FFT uh, has a very low complexity implementation. And one of the main reasons why OFDM became popular is because of its low complexity implementation. It had all several advantages, but because of the complexity it was not being taken forward. But once this thing came into being, 
uh, this FFT operation uh, OFDM became very, very popular. And since we are having this cyclic prefix that means extension of the signal in the front part of it, the linear convolution which happens in the channel appears as a circular convolution. So, this circular convolution uh, if you take the DFT of this entire operation which is the received signal. So, this entire signal is y of t which is received. If you take the DFT at the receiver opposite operation of the transmitter it works out as product of the corresponding frequency components. So, everything fits into plate place and uh, whatever ISI happens at the receiver part one would be rejecting this component, one will be rejecting this particular part and one will be concentrating only on this part which is the desired signal part useful OFDM part and it will pass it through the FFT operation at the receiver. So, now instead of leaving it blank, if we bring a cyclic prefix to it, uh, it helps us uh, avoid ISI as well as uh, use a FFT operation at the receiver and uh, provide low complexity processing as well as low complexity channel equalization. Now, uh, amongst uh, several other things one, we, one should remember that if one is using a guard interval, one is actually using less signal energy. But if one is using a cyclic prefix, then some extra amount of energy is being wasted in some form uh, and the part of transmission over here. But uh, that wastage is kind of beneficial by overall lower complexity operation at the transmitter or at the receiver side. But however, there were many works in this regard and there was lot of work which was done to reduce the effect of cyclic prefix or the uh, having, having some cyclic prefix and um, this is still an important issue, still an important area because uh, spectrum is very, very costly. So, if one can find out methods uh, by which we can remove or at least reduce cyclic prefix significantly uh, while maintaining low complexity operation at the receiver plus providing low complexity channel equalization then that would be a highly beneficial scheme. Now, one can think of that I reduce uh, guard interval, but complexity goes up that is not accepted because uh, if guard interval is uh, removed then spectral efficiency increases but uh, then one has to deploy um, inter-symbol interference cancelling receiver for every subcarrier and then the exponential growth in complexity. One also has to remember the FFT operation has to be utilized. So, taking everything into consideration if one comes up with a better mechanism then that would be highly acceptable and highly desired by this community which works on multi-carrier systems. Okay. Uh, this is almost uh, the same picture that we have, uh, but it is much cleaner picture. So, we have discussed uh, more or less uh, the important issues and uh, this particular slide more or less summarizes the parameter choice. And uh, one important thing that uh, we have over here is especially in the last part over here, uh, which talks about a certain uh, tolerance factor. So, what it says is that if we know that uh, the there is a certain subcarrier spacing, this has to be decided and we know that there is a maximum amount of uh, offset in the carrier frequency. So, we are talking about offset. Now, this offset could be due to various reasons. One is LO performance, the local oscillator performance, um, which is kind of the accuracy of the lo local oscillator, uh, frequency synchronization capability and uh, then there would be accuracy would also include the phase noise of the oscillator and there would also be presence of Doppler which we will discuss in greater details. So, to take care of this uh, one uh, rule of thumb or easy way one can, un one can remember or one can understand is if one compares this ratio delta F by delta F S C, uh, if this is less than 0 0.02, then one can more or less get around 20 dB of uh, signal to interference plus noise ratio and this interference is self interference. So, if one is uh, maintaining this rule of thumb, then one can get a good uh, intercarrier interference and uh, that would be a factor which helps design this uh, subcarrier spacing. So, one has to see there are several factors which are usually chosen in order to design the OFDM system parameters. Okay, so, this is uh, the overall uh, flow of things. So, we have at the receiver uh, the low noise amplifier where the signal comes in followed by the local oscillator which is used for down conversion, a low pass filter, there would be automatic gain controller, uh, analog to digital conversion, time sync, frequency sync. Now, these are uh, very, very important. Uh, because uh, 
we will see that if we have the signal. So, let us uh, go back to this particular figure and we said that we are going to use this useful part of the signal for processing at the receiver by rejecting this cyclic prefix. At the receiver you are going to reject this cyclic prefix okay, and process this part and send this part to the DFT operation. Okay. So, now uh, there are some possibilities which come in. One of the possibility is that there is not a perfect uh, timing synchronization and hence instead of starting at this point, one starts at this point. Okay. So, one starts at this point. However, one uses the standard length of the OFDM symbol. So, one stretches beyond the OFDM symbol. So, if one stretches beyond the OFDM symbol, what happens? The cyclic prefix of the next OFDM symbol comes in. Okay. Cyclic prefix of next. So, if the cyclic prefix of the next OFDM symbol comes in, so this portion one is going to experience inter symbol interference. All right. so, so, this is very important. So, as a result one can think of instead of going uh, to the left, there could be going to the right, there could be also other possibility that one has synchronized to this point and has reached up to here, because that is the useful portion. So, if one has uh, done it in this manner, then um, what is the problem? There is a problem that this particular section which contains the impulse or the inter symbol interference from the previous OFDM symbol, from the previous OFDM symbol, then that results in ISI. Right? So, there is always a problem of ISI if you are not perfectly synchronized and if there is ISI then there is huge reduction in signal to interference plus noise ratio and hence bit error rate would increase. Now, if the guard interval is kept slightly larger, it is usually kept greater than the maximum channel impulse response, then uh, and, and the channel impulse response dies out earlier. So, if the channel impulse response finishes at this point, then there is a certain amount of margin which can be made available. So, even if you are synchronized a little bit to the left, there is not much of a problem. Why there is not much of a problem? Because one would be receiving signal up to this part. So, one would not be getting this because one has synchronized to the left, but one can re recall that this part is already copied over here. right? So, this part is already copied. So, one is not re losing any information, but since there is a shift, a circular shift is there in time domain. since there is a circular shift in the time domain. So, this would result in a phase rotation in the frequency domain, because uh, x t minus tau would result in the frequency of e to the power of minus j 2 pi tau by n kind of a phase rotation that can happen in the in the frequency domain. So, this kind this frequency rotation can be corrected because this will become indistinguishable from the phase rotation which is introduced by the channel. So, we have discussed that here uh, there is a channel that gets multiplied. So, if you are wrongly synchronized you are going to get some phase rotation part which is e to the power of let us say minus j 2 pi k tau by n. Okay. So, this particular phase rotation now this is a complex quantity. So, this complex quantity uh, one will not be able to distinguish any further, they will be integrated together to one channel coefficient. Okay. All right. so, so, that means uh, synchronization is very critical, however, one is little bit to the left, it is not much of a problem. In terms of uh, frequency domain synchronization, uh, there is big issue, we, we, we have uh, said some things and we will discuss further that if this is the frequency domain representation of the carriers and we have assumed that they will remain orthogonal. Now, if there is frequency offset, so in that case the receiver would instead of being aligned over here, the receiver gets aligned at a slightly different point. So, if the receiver is aligned at a slightly different point, in that case the desired signal reduces instead of being sampled over there, the desired signal amplitude has reduced as well as the interference signal which is from the neighboring carrier comes over here. 
So, there is again a heavy um, intercarrier interference, so which results in uh, loss of orthogonality. You can clearly see there is loss of orthogonality, heavy penalty is paid. So, therefore, these are very important factors for OFDM system design. After one has uh, successfully synchronized them, the FFT operation at the receiver, channel equalization, we have already said this. There is phase tracking term, uh, which are some details of it. A symbol demapper, that means you are actually finding out what this constellation means in terms of bits, fo followed by forward error correction code and output bits. And this is the overall flow of what happens at the receiver. So, uh, we, we stop our discussion over here in this particular lecture. Uh, we will move on to the next lecture and whatever we have discussed, uh, we will present the analytical model, uh, which you can go through in your uh, own time. Uh, we will briefly go through them and look at some other important aspects, which need to be remembered when discussing about OFTM. Thank you.